Well, the 18th chapter of the book was the best one. My personal favorite read, Eddie Pascal, here with Alec Ingold. Yes, friend of the program, Alec Ingold, as we break down everything here in the fifth quarter. And, dude, just to try to put it into words, right? Absolutely bonkers. I mean, you look at this game that the Silver and Black actually end up winning. Give me the final score, 35-32. It's hard to keep track at this point. <laughs> but, dude, it was unbelievable. I mean, if you want highs, lows, in-betweens, this was, this was the game for you. It was the epitome of our season. I know we talked about that earlier, but, I mean, literally all of the adversity, give it to the guys. Everyone stepped up. Offense, defense, special teams. You had Daniel playing big. You had Derek Carr playing big. Hunter Renfro. Waller was out there getting double covered. I mean, Josh Jacobs taking the game over at the very end. Like, that's how he stamps games at the very end of the games. Um, he's pushing the line of contact um, with this offensive line there, moving people. Uh, defensive line, Max Crosby. You can go literally list this entire team, this entire roster. How about T. Billy? Yeah. Forcing a fumble? Yeah. That I mean, everybody stepped up, offense, defense, special teams. It was it was a Raiders football game tonight. I mean, you can make the argument this was the most complete game that we've seen from this, this team in 2021, right? You talk about offense, defense, special teams. I don't want to talk about the game, but before we get into that, right, mm -hmm. we got to start with you. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? How are you feeling? It's been a minute since we talked to you. It's good to see you out, moving about, and uh, how, how are things in the recovery process? Things are well. Good. Things are good, good, ahead good. of schedule. Everyone's trying to yank me back, and they said, just wait and just be patient. I said, I need to be ready for the Super Bowl when my guys make it. So, no, I mean, we've been in the weight room. Uh, we're six weeks out now. Uh, squat, I squatted 315 the other day, just took it for a ride. And could we, could we do a 30-second timeout where yeah, yeah. you sent me the video right. of you squatting uh, and made me feel pretty terrible about <laughs> myself because I had literally just come back from the gym. I'm feeling yeah, yeah. good about myself. Like, here we go. You know, good. I think it was a Saturday. I was like, good Saturday. Like, everything's going. And then you just go, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm off pretty major surgery about five weeks ago, and look what I can do. And I was like, ah, that is why you are in the NFL, <laughs> and I, I certainly am not. But, dude, that, that's great to hear that, that things are progressing. Uh, you know, just in st as we stood here and waited for everyone to get set up, you know, the fans were coming up and saying what's up to you. And it, it was really cool to see that interaction of this group of fans that obviously means so much to you, but they're giving it back to you too, saying, hey, man, we're rooting for you. You know, we can't wait to see what you do in 2022. So it was a cool moment. Yeah, it's, it's cool to get that interaction. You know, it, it hasn't been there on the field, obviously, so – um, any chance I, I get to fly low under the radar 99% of the time. So anytime you get recognized and, and you know you can let people know that you're working hard, you're in shape, you can't wait to come back, um, it's a little reassuring knowing that um, you can remind fans and, and the people that care about you that we're going to be all right. Yeah, we still got it. We'll we still right. got it. So back to the important stuff. This game was unbelievable. Uh, the Raiders secure a win, which means now – we are going to the postseason. And let me wax poetic for just a second before we dive into the X's and O's and, and the numbers of all this thing. To me, it is unbelievable that after everything that your collective group has gone through, call it the last four months, it's unbelievable that you guys even got to this point to have a win in your in situation. But to win the way that you did, to take the punches on the jaw that you did, to bounce back, to have Carlson do his thing, to have this entire team do enough to win a ball game. Regardless of what happens on Saturday, regardless of what happens over the next couple months, like this is an incredibly special group. And you've told me that from jump, right? You told me even back in July, like, I know it sounds cheesy, but this, this group is like a different kind of group. And I think tonight is the complete embodiment of that, right? Yeah, I think that this game was something where you can kind of wrap a bow on it, right? And say, you know, everyone stepped up. This is what we've been talking about. We're different. We're resilient. But the funny thing about that locker room was this wasn't a finish line. This was a starting line. Yeah, and, and I mean, you look, and we still have a lot of football left to play, which is really the best, the best possible outcome from yep. this. A lot of football left to play, and speaking of the football, what were you feeling over that final, that final drive in overtime and then into overtime? Because we were up there in the box, and I was just thinking to myself, like, I'm physically exhausting myself, right. like just working myself, like, like f working myself up. I can't imagine what it was like for you guys. M my heart was racing. I could hear my, my heart beating literally the entire time. Um, but at the same time, there's, like, an overwhelming amount of trust. Like, mm -hmm. you just – there's nothing you can do. You can't impact the game at all. You're sitting there, you're watching, and, and you're watching your guys step up. And it was just the coolest thing, watching Max time after time after time, being in the backfield, whether it was a, a sack or not. He was impacting a play every single time he was on defense. To watch Josh Jacobs take the rock, run the ball, right down their throat, and you couldn't do anything about it. I mean, that's – I mean, that's my draft class. You know, that those are my guys that you come in with together, you sacrifice for as rookies together, 
and you're seeing them grow up in, in, right in front of your eyes and become great NFL football players, and that's what they did tonight. And speaking of your guys, let's start with Josh, right? He finishes the day 26 carries, 132 <laughs> yards, no, five and 5.1 <laughs> yards a carry, right? That's unbelievable. And, and look, you know, the fans have had the fans have felt a certain type of way about Josh's productivity this year, but sure. over the past month, this guy has been unbelievable. And there was a look in his eye, and I think we saw it, we saw it early in that first quarter. But then, like to your point, in overtime in the fourth quarter, when he had to go out and eat. The man was absolutely famished. Like, and I feel like sometimes people forget. Like, you look at Josh's numbers from the past couple of years. Like, don't get it twisted. Like, this dude is an elite running back in the NFL. And for him to go out and put this together, 26 for 132 and a touchdown on the biggest day, or excuse me, the biggest night of the year for this team. I mean, what a stud, dude. Yeah, you could say you're shocked or, or you know, whatever. I, I'm, I'm not at all. That's, that's the type of guy he is. And for anyone saying anything different, you're kidding yourself. You know, that, that's the type of dude he is. He shows up in the biggest time. You want to give him the ball as many times as you can because he's going to be spectacular. He's going to average those five. It, it wasn't like he had a, a few big, like, 60, 70-yard runs. You know, his, his biggest run is 28. Yep. I mean, he's getting five, six, seven, eight yards a touch all the time. You're keeping everybody on track. You're keeping the entire offense on schedule. You're able to open up everybody else, the full playbook. That goes – that goes so much further than a guy having three big, you know, 40-yard yeah. runs and, and then not touching the ball the rest of the time. And you know what was crazy to me, too? And he had a couple of them, especially in, in that fourth quarter and overtime kind of portion of the action where he w it was like kind of like that fall forward five yards. Yep. And it, go it goes down as like a five-yard game, which, which is what? A net positive, right? right? But when you really think like, hey, this dude should have gotten hit behind the line of scrimmage. We should be in second and 11 compared to, f you know, second and five. Like – I think those are the kind of moments where you're like, oh, Josh is, Josh is cooking today, right? I, I love how he can make the first guy miss so fast and then get back to his read. He, you know, a lot of running backs, as soon as you get off schedule, it's hard to get back on schedule mm -hmm. within the play. And he's so good at making a guy miss in the backfield or making, setting a linebacker up and then getting back to where he needs to, getting back to his point where then he makes a cut. It almost looks like he's making two or three cuts because he's reading so fast. Dude, there, I, there was one late in the game. I think it was third. I think it was either a third and two or a third and four where he was out in space and he was going to his right. And the cut that he put, I was like, oh, my God. Yep. Like, that I know is, exactly what you're talking exactly about. Like, yep. Dude, that was unbelievable. He's and going completely horizontal, right? You teach to attack that defender. And Josh couldn't attack the a defender vertically. He had to set him up horizontally. He was going fully horizontal down the line of scrimmage and then cut vertically. And that's like, that's you can't do that. Running backs can't do that. You shouldn't be able to do that. Josh Jacobs can do that. I'm going to put in a special request to our social team. I don't do a lot of this, but I w I'm going to ask for the gif of that. Right. Because like just to see that in slow-mo just kind of looped would be unbelievable. But it wasn't just Josh, man. And you look at Jalen's day, right? Jalen, two huge third-down conversions. He finishes his day two carries, 24 yards. I mean, Jalen, a, a guy who doesn't get a ton of, a ton of a carries because of Josh and because of uh, Peyton and all those guys and Kenyon when he was doing his thing. But, man, he certainly – I mean, he 1,000% made the most of his chances this afternoon. That's what Jalen does. I mean, he had 24 yards. One of them was uh, a third and yeah. 22, and he yeah. picks up 23. So you, you might see that on a box score. You don't see his blitz pickups. You don't mm. see how he can impact the defensive line. They don't want to rush when they see number 30 on that side. He will chip. He'll get those ribs. Joey Bosa, you know, like yeah. those guys, they don't want to feel that all the time. And Jalen is always there. He's picking up blitzes. Um, he's a great third down back, and he can give you a 23-yard pickup when you need it most. Also, I mean, does, does the dirty work, too, where he drew that flag early in the game, too. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, yep. I mean, he, I mean, look, he took down. one. Uh, yeah, he took one for the team big time. And, like, I, I think that just speaks to, like, kind of the unselfishness of Jalen. And Jalen's been – I always joke with Jalen where, it, like, the fact that he's been here for so long <laughs> makes me feel old. Yeah, because, right. Because, like – he was like, oh, man, I think I'd only been here like two years when Jalen Jalen walked through the door for the first time. I was like, oh, my God, like yeah. you got two kids now, like <laughs> you're married. I was like, my God, like I really am getting old. But, I mean, that's just like the epitome of him, right? A dude he mastered that is his getting, role. Yeah, he knows exactly who he is. He knows exactly what's asked of him. And time after time after time, he just delivers. That's what this entire team did. Everyone has a role. Everyone's playing it. Everyone's developing together. Everyone's growing together. I said this uh, on that little letter. Um, this team is greater than the sum of all of its parts. Mm -hmm. People are better because of one another when they're playing together like this. I mean, this is, 
it's fun to see the guys play like this. Yeah, I mean, speaking of guys that it's fun to see, we got Darren Waller back today for the first time since Thanksgiving. Two catches for 22 yards. But Darren's one of those guys, and correct me if I'm wrong, where even like Darren at like 70%, I, I, we don't know what he was at today, right? right? But even if Darren at 70, 70%, like you as a defense have to account for him. Like you, I, I imagine having number 83 out there changes what Ole and the boys want to do offensively, just knowing like, hey, he exists. Our, our entire team dynamic changes when Darren Waller is on our team. And... Uh, he's a great human being. He's he's a great football player. He's a better human being. Um, and, and it means the world to see him be able to pull it together for a week 18 regular season finale, everything he's been battling, and to be able to step up for the guys. Um, it's so much more in a box score. And that's just football. That's just that's just being a dude being a guy. A guy yeah, being a dude. A guy being a dude, man. It's it's really, really cool. I mean, and we talk about, about guys being dudes. I mean, you can say that that entire defense throughout the entirety of twenty twenty one has just been guys being dudes. But like today in particular, and I, I know that when we look at the final score, right, I think the Chargers ended up with thirty two points, but like they have played such a good spirited committed with purpose. I think that's the term I use a lot, is they play with purpose. Right. Right? And, and it's been throughout the entire year. And to see Max, we talk about big guys, you know, big players showing up in big moments. Yep. That's exactly what Max did today. I mean, it, it really felt like in that second half in particular, he was the best guy on that football field. Mm -hmm. And the Chargers were doing everything they could to try to take him away. And candidly, they weren't super successful at it. No, and, and the Chargers and Justin Herbert, they played perfectly. Yep. They played perfect offense in the fourth quarter in overtime. Literally did everything perfect. Executed. You know, picked up all those fourth, fourth and tens. Um, but to see a guy like Denzel Perryman step up, you talk about hidden yardage. He doesn't give up a single ounce of hidden yardage. When he yeah. hit me, he makes a tackle. Max Crosby, Yannick, the entire front, Quentin Jefferson, um, Solly Thomas, you can go down the line. Darius Phylon before he went out, yeah. huge impact in the game. The, and then the entire back end, Casey Hayward making a pick. I mean, that's um, – no one throws his way. <laughs> he yeah. doesn't get a lot of defense yeah. passes defended because people don't throw his way. And then he is able to read it, make a play on the ball when he needed to, and, and that led to points. And Sami, if you heard this before, Denzel Perryman leads the Raiders in tackles. Just he knows his role. He he f is the plugger of this defense. He's all over the field, run stopping, pass defending. He's all over the place, and it, it's really inspiring to watch him play football. And. and Look, the end result of today is a win. We <laughs> carry on. The celebration, you know, responsible celebration is no upon doubt. us. But, like, it is, you look at the end of that game, right? You look at how we got to overtime. And I feel like, I don't want to paint with a broad brush, but I feel like it's easy for a team to kind of take that shot and be, like, kind of shell-shocked a little bit. Be like, oh, my God, we were up by, what, 13 with four minutes left or whatever it was. Like, how do we kind of respond? And this group responded in the absolute perfect way. They really did. <laughs> We've been trained. <laughs> We've been trained to, re to uh, respond to adversity the right way. And I think that's something that every single guy that is a part of this team and a part of this locker room will be able to carry for, for the rest of their lives. Uh, the, the ability to take the punches, roll with them, stand up, dust off, set your feet in the ground and go fight again. I mean, that's, that's what this team is about. And I feel like a lot of that starts with Derek, right? I feel like it kind of has to start with your, with your starting quarterback, with the guy that's out there every play under center, and he kind of has to establish the tone. And, I mean, give him credit, man. I mean, his line tonight is not the prettiest thing, but he made the plays when he absolutely had to. He got this team from A to Z offensively. D.C. finishes 20 of 36, 186 with two touchdowns. And, man, I, I mean, we talk about just rallying the troops, about understanding, like, hey, what happened in the fourth quarter in overtime, look, it's done, right? Yep. Like, we got to go out there and put points on the board. And that's exactly what he did in arguably the biggest game of his, his professional career. It's a really little thing, but when Derek runs out onto the field in f the fourth quarter overtime, he runs out onto the field. Mm. The body language that he carries with himself, I know it doesn't seem like that would be a big deal at all, but when I'm on the field with Derek and I see four run out to the middle of the field and tell the ref what hash we're going on, that starts me off right, the right way. That starts me off on on schedule, on the right tempo. Um, you know, what's that? Uh, remember the Titans saying, "Attitude reflects leadership." Yes. That's our the attitude of this team reflects Derek Carr's leadership, and it, it's top down, and he's at the top of it. And, and I think that on like like a personal level, like I think it's really cool now that Derek gets a chance to play in the postseason. I mean, you guys, have, most of you guys weren't here in 2016, right? But the fact that he played so well that year, that this entire team played so well. And then obviously what happens on Christmas Eve happens and Derek doesn't get a chance to play in that postseason game. The fact and I know I know it's bigger than than Derek, right? I know it's about the fifty three guys in that locker room. But like the fact that he's gonna get this moment next week and I think is pretty cool. Yeah, I've heard hor horror stories about that season, about how everything was clicking the right yeah. way and then tragedy strikes and um 
Yeah, I'm so excited for a guy that's that's played eight years and given his heart and soul to this organization, gets a chance to play in this postseason and put his stamp and his legacy on um, this postseason run with this, this group of guys um, because he embodies what we're all about this year. And it, it's going to be exciting to watch him step up, be in the spotlight, and be able to do his thing because – you just you just cheer for a guy like Derek Carr. And it, I mean, the flow gets another week now, right? So the, in terms of the aesthetic, right, the hair will be just a little bit longer. <laughs> a little, the little bit hanging out the, the back. Yeah, a little ducktail, letting yep. people know what's up. Yep, I know he's no here doubt. for a good time. <laughs> but I, like I said, man, like very, very happy for him just on like a personal level that he's going to get this moment, right? And like we talk about, whatever's going to happen over the next couple of months, it's going to happen. But he's going to get this moment, right? a moment that he so deserves for every – and look, I know that the collective of you guys have gone through the ringer over yep. the past couple months, right? But the fact that Derek, every week, has to go out, he's got to talk to the media, he's got to address things that, candidly, he doesn't need to address, right? No, it's none of and, his business, and the right? And the fact that he does it with respect, with candor, uh, with purpose. I know we talked about that word. And he sits up there, and he's going to have his moment now to be like, hey, let's talk, let's enjoy it, but hey, on, on to the next. And we, we've talked about offense, we've talked about defense, and I would be so remiss. And you know how much I love my specialists. You know how much I love all those guys. And my dude, Carlson, once again, absolutely unbelievable. The biggest moments, connects from 50 plus again, connects on the game winner. I mean, I, we've heard Derek talk about it, we've heard everyone on the offense talk about it, but like, there's like a, such a collective calm when he just rolls out there. And you never want to say, hey, he's automatic, but like, it feels like he's he's pretty close to automatic when he goes out there in these big moments. Yeah, we're in the Twitch lounge, right? Yes. Can I do like a little uh, video game analogy? Is that Please okay? Please do. I feel like this team, Daniel Carlson, Derek Carr, we're showing up into one of the final circles in Warzone, right? Yep. And we are bloodied. <laughs> we've won. We've got 10 team wipes. We've got 10 wins this year. The guys have been through every situation. We had a couple buybacks. We got guys back. You know, you're running and gunning, getting the ammo. And it's like you're prepared for any situation that's about to come, whether you need Daniel Carlson to go out to kick a game winner, you need Derek Carr, you need Josh Jacobs, you need Max Crosby. Who do you need? We got them. They've done it before. It's, it's it, what we got going on right now. It's, it's a pretty special, and like I know we, we've talked about this a lot in, in a, variety of different, a different variety of ways, but it is pretty unbelievable that after everything that's happened, that this team got this moment – secured this moment in perhaps the most entertaining regular season finale of all time, lives to fight another day. And, and to your point, I mean, this is a group that has taken their lumps in 2021, right? It hasn't been perfect all the time, but my God, in the biggest moments and the brightest lights, with the, frankly, the entire sports world watching yes. tonight, like this group showed up, man. They 100% showed up. Yep, there's been supreme ownership. Guys have owned the losses, the mistakes. They've learned from it. They've had humility when they do something great. And you're able to grow to the point where, like I said before, this isn't, this isn't a finish line. It's a starting line. Mm -hmm. It's a starting point. It's an opportunity for everyone that's been through whatever we've been through. Wipe the records away. Wipe everything else out. We're in the playoffs. We're in the tournament. We got a shot. Everyone else out here has a chance at a ring. We have a chance at the Super Bowl. It's a starting line. It's the starting point of all of our opportunities for this postseason legacy. And, dude, before we get out of here, I, 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 just, I have to give – kind of a collective moment to this entire coaching staff, right? To Rich, to Ole, to Gus, to my guy Nick Holt, every single person, right? I mean, because they have all been collectively put in a position that, candidly, they didn't think they were going to be in a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Rich has got you guys together, that he kept this together, that he has gotten, literally launched you guys in the playoffs for the first time in 2016. I mean, I cannot say enough good things about Rich. I know that you probably can't say enough good things about Rich, but I think that as well as everything has been going on the field for you guys, and look, rattling off four four in a row in essentially back to back to back to back must win games is is pretty fantastic. But like, we got to give the coaches a little bit of shine, man, because they they have done an incredible job. You got to give the entire coaching staff the roses, 100%. And um, I know I got handed a piece of paper um, or like a, an article to read, and it was about keeping the standard the standard. And all of the goals that we had at the beginning of the year, we had 10 wins circled. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had committed to one another that we were going to show up to work and this is what we were going to do. Uh, one of the first things Rich did was made a council of leaders on the team. Everyone sat on the room and let their hearts out and said, this is what we are going to do. This is what we're going to accomplish this season. And he said, okay, that's how we're going to coach you. We're going to hold you to this standard. 
you're going to do right longer than anybody else. You're going to keep doing right no matter what. And it started from the top down. It started from that leadership. It started from the coaching staff and the players in that room that were able to, you know, echo the message. And it was every single person buying in, grabbing the rope, not letting go, and being able to put out a performance like this where everyone is able to step up. Everyone has their moment to shine and to prove why they belong in this locker room with these guys wearing the silver and black. And real quick, too, I mean, we were talking about the atmosphere before we started recording. And this is tonight was, without a doubt, the loudest I've heard Allegiant. Uh, this very much felt like a postseason football game <laughs> in terms of environment, in terms of noise, in terms of energy. And... I mean, it was really, really cool. Like, obviously, for the organization, this is a huge moment, right? I mean, I know we'll, we'll start, you know, starting tomorrow. We'll be on to Cincinnati, right? right? But, you know, we'll enjoy it tonight. But really, I think this was an awesome moment for the city of Las Vegas, too. I mean, the fact that they weren't able to be here last year, the first season of us officially being in Vegas, and now that they got this moment, they got to see, like, hey, this is what it can be, right? Yes. When at its best, this is what Raiders football can be. Like, I, I think it, it's going to mean a lot to the city. I'm excited for the city to kind of be able to say, hey, look at us. We're a big-time sports town. I know that the Knights and the Aces and everyone has been doing outstanding things. But, like, this was our first moment with right. the city of Las Vegas, and I think that was pretty cool. We're starting the relationship off right. It's been exciting. Uh, we started with a big Monday night football win, a walk-off winner. Uh, with Zay Jones, and we finished with this one. So and, and there was a tumultuous up and down yeah. all the way in between. It was a storybook ending uh, to a regular season. Um, but once again, I'm excited to, to have this city be able to rally around their guys when we go out to oh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and, and feel some sort of pride about what we put on a football field for the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. And the journey isn't, isn't ending, right? It's just starting now, and I cannot wait. It is going to be a very, very busy week. Uh, short week now, right, short as week. we get ready to go Bring to Ohio. Bring it on. Pile it short on. Week. Cold weather game, <laughs> East Coast time, short week. Let's do it. But it is going to be a blast. And per usual, man, I know I tell you all the time, but the fact that you – uh, I would say 99% of the time, agree to come hang out with us. <laughs> and you're so open with us. You're so transparent with us. You're such a – I know it's such a cliche, but you're just such a good dude. Uh, we really do appreciate it. It does not go unnoticed or unspoken about. Like, you are one of our favorite guys in this locker room for a very good reason. And uh, we cannot wait to see you get back out on the football field. It is going to be very exciting. But for now, I'll, st I'm, I'll take you right here. I'll take you right here until you're ready to go do your thing. And, uh, and it's going to be a blast, man. So buckle up. We still got a lot of football left to play. Uh, so for Eddie Pascal, my man Alec Ingold, who did a fantastic job tonight, no surprise there. My man Ray on the ones and twos, our Dynamite staff here. Alexandra and everyone back in the control room who helps us. And uh, really the entirety of Silverback Productions. Let's keep playing some football. Let's, Let's have baby. a lot of fun. This is not ending. We are just starting. So I know this for sure. We don't know what's going to happen uh, six days from now. But I do know one thing, that we will be back following the Bengals game for our next edition, and my, our first, this makes me so happy, our first postseason edition of the fifth quarter. Just win, baby.